I'm George Simons, co-founder of Solo Suit, and I'm going to show you 11 tips to win your debt collection lawsuit when it goes to court. All right, oftentimes in these videos, I'm talking about debt lawsuits pre-court. Uh, this is when it's actually in court, when it's going to trial, and you got cases, hearings, all that kind of stuff going on. All right, 11 tips to win your debt collection lawsuit in court. All right, tip number one is dealing with how to get through discovery. So basically you just need to know what discovery is to get through it, right? So there's disclosure and discovery. Uh, so once you, once the complaint's filed and then you file like an answer, then basically the court go, the case goes into discovery. Uh, so discovery is when the plaintiff and the defendant, they correspond and they share documents with each other, basically get everything out in the open and figure out what, what, what actually this case is even about. So there's a few ways to do that. One, you got depositions, uh, then that's like sworn testimony. Oftentimes it's video recorded of witnesses pre-trial. Uh, and next one is an interrogatories. These are written answers to questions. And the third is the request for production of documents. All right, most of these small dollar debt collection lawsuits, you're only gonna deal with interrogatories and request for productions. So when they're requesting uh, documents, these are some kind of documents that oftentimes comes out in debt collection lawsuits. Uh, so first up, you have like a charge off. This is like a document from the original creditor saying the debt was uh, was was no longer being paid and they charged off the account. Uh, you got payment history, okay? Uh, so these are basically like an accounting of the debt uh, along with a, a balance sheet uh, and then a bill of sale, okay? Uh, the bill of sale is a document between the original creditor and the debt buyer saying that the original creditor is selling it to the debt collector. So for example, like you might have a debt with American Express, uh, American Express charges off the account and then they sell the account to Midland Funding who then collects and sues you for that debt. Uh, so all these documents probably come forth in discovery. Um, if they aren't, uh, then there's a problem and the plaintiff probably won't be able to show that you actually owe the debt. All right, tip number two, show up. All right, so that means uh, show up by responding to the complaint. Also, if you have like a hearing or a trial date or pre-trial conference, show up on that date. If you don't show up, the judge isn't gonna care about you and you're gonna lose your lawsuit, all right? Uh, just like Woody Allen says, 80% of life is just showing up. So, show up. All right, tip number three is have a theory of the case. All right, theory of the case is basically like your theory like your idea for how you're going to win the lawsuit. All right, if you don't have an idea of how you're gonna win, you're gonna lose. So come up with a theory of the case. It can be as simple as saying, uh, the plaintiff, the debt collector, Midland Funding, can't prove that I actually owe the debt, and therefore, I'm going to win. So that's it, you just gotta prove that they can't actually prove that you owe the debt, and then you're good to go. All right, tip number four is to go to the pretrial conference. All right, this is pretty similar to tip number two. Uh, oftentimes in these lawsuits, there is a pretrial conference. It's basically uh, where the parties and the judge meet, then they go over some stuff together, right? Uh, the judge will probably want to discuss like the schedule of the trial, uh, content of the trial, whether or not it should go to arbitration or mediation or an alternative dispute resolution process, and if there's a summary judgment that should be filed. All right, so again, if you don't show up at the pretrial conference, you're probably going to lose your case. So, show up. Number five, make a trial notebook. Uh, this is what the pros are doing. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you don't have to get too fancy, you don't have to get too digital. Just get like a folder, just get a stack of documents, whatever. Put all the documents from the trial in that stack or in that folder, keep them all together, bring it with you to the trial. All right, so this includes like documents that are filed in court, any evidence that you have, any documentation around the debt that you have, uh, info about the parties, info on any witnesses that you're planning on bringing like your mom to say like, hey, my son doesn't owe the debt. Anything like that, just make a notebook, keep it all together, bring it with you. All right, that brings us to our next tip. Number six, gather evidence, all right? Make sure you get like the accounting of the debt. Make sure you look through all of the documents that the plaintiff included in the complaint. That might include like the bill of sale, again, the balance sheet for the debt, uh, the original contract for the credit card. Make sure you look through all of that and find out where the debt collector is adding in extra fees, all right? What we oftentimes see, somebody might have a legitimate thousand dollar debt with American Express, but then American Express like sells that debt to the collector, and then the collector adds on a bunch of fees, a bunch of attorney's fees, a bunch of interest, 
and all of a sudden that thousand dollar debt turns into a three thousand dollar debt okay so that's what you're trying to stop in this lawsuit you might actually want to pay the amount that you owe but you shouldn't pay anything extra on top of that and so you got to find your own evidence and make sure you have your own accounting of the debt to make sure you aren't paying anything extra tip number seven figure out whether you're going to have a judge or a jury trial okay so as you might know, the Seventh Amendment in the Constitution guarantees that everybody uh, can have, everybody in a civil case can have a jury trial, essentially. But 38B of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure requires that people request a jury trial. Okay, so you aren't going to get a jury trial unless you really fight for it and like force the court to give it to you. You might even have to pay extra money, like hundreds of dollars, to get a jury trial. Um, so if you're just trying to make this like really long, drawn out, difficult, painful process for the plaintiff, you might want to go for a jury trial. But if you just want the simple process, which most people get by, by default, you're just going to go with a judge trial. And usually that's a pretty good way to go. It's a lot simpler, a lot less stuff for you to manage and worry about. Fun fact, the Seventh Amendment only promises a jury trial uh, to people that are being sued for amounts over $20. Right? Still today, like 300 years after the Constitution was written, uh, that $20 still holds true. Uh, so if you're being sued for like the toaster you bought at uh, Walmart for like $19.99, uh, sorry, but you are out of luck. Tip number eight, know the anatomy of a trial. So know what's gonna happen before you get in there, okay? And I'm gonna tell you what happens. When you start off a trial, uh, it begins with opening statements, okay? So both sides get to make basically like their statements about whatever they want to lay out their case. Uh, for the judge. Okay, so the plaintiff, the debt collector, got to sue you, he's going to he'll get to say his part, you'll get to say your part. And then, after that, the plaintiff gets to make their case by asking witnesses questions. Uh, it's important to note here that the burden of proof is on the plaintiff. Okay, so what that means is that the plaintiff has to prove that you owe the debt. It's not up to you to prove that you don't owe the debt. You just have to stop the plaintiff from proving that you do owe the debt. Okay, so a little slight nuance there to keep in mind. Uh, and then, the defendant makes their case. Okay, so you do the same thing by asking witnesses questions. You can also cross-examine uh, the plaintiff's witness. Okay, this happens all the time in movies. It's where you ask the other guy's witness tough leading questions. A leading question would be, instead of saying, what color was the house? You would say, the house was yellow, right? And then the witness would be like, oh yeah, of course. All right, so this is a leading question where you get to, uh, you get them to say what you want them to say. Uh, another important point here is when you are presenting evidence, ask permission of the judge first. Okay, so ask the judge, hey, can I present this evidence to you and everybody else here? Uh, and then once that's done, then there are closing arguments. It's again where you can kind of editorialize or just like make conjecture, just kind of say, uh, you know, I don't owe, I don't owe this debt. Just like say it straight up, therefore I shouldn't uh, be forced to pay it and I should win this case. After that, if you're in a jury trial, then there are jury instructions which are given to the jury and the jury has to make a deliberation based on those instructions. Uh, so then the jury goes back in like a closed room and they think about stuff and fight and have lunch. And then they come back with hopefully a unanimous, uh, I mean, unanimous decision in favor of you, which means you get off the hook. Uh, if it's a judge case, then the judge might make a decision right there in, in, in the court, in, in the trial, or you might have to wait a while, maybe up to 60 days for a written decision from the judge. Most likely he's just gonna make a decision right then and there. All right, tip number nine is to cross-examine the other people's witness. Okay, so that's probably how you're gonna win the case. If your lawsuit actually even goes to like trial or to a hearing, how you're probably going to win is by cross-examining their witness. You might not even have to bring your own witnesses at all because it's not up to you to prove anything, it's up to them to prove everything. So really what you have to do is you have to cross-examine their witness to prove that they don't know Jack because they probably don't, okay? They probably don't know Jack. So you just gotta show the judge that. Okay, so a few a few pointers here, okay? Uh, so the witness, the plaintiff's key witness will be a person that works, let's say it's Midland Funding, a person that works for the debt collector. And they'll be testifying about the history of the debt and that Midland Funding actually has the right to sue you and collect on this debt. And Midland Funding's attorney will be asking that witness questions. That witness will probably be there on the phone. Probably isn't even gonna be there because it's too expensive. Uh, and then once that's done, then you can cross-examine that witness. So here are some questions that uh, you can straight up ask verbatim, all right? In preparing for your testimony today, did you review the documents and the exhibits that you just testified about? Okay, so you're gonna ask this to the witness on the phone. You can just like read this off a piece of paper Read a red to them. Uh, and then they'll say, yeah. 
And then you'll ask, when did that happen? And they'll say, ah, you know, about like an hour ago, maybe two hours ago. Then you'll, be, then you'll say, before you reviewed them today, did you ever review them previously? And they'll be like, nope. And, be, and then in your mind you'll be like, oh, well that's interesting. It basically means um, you don't know anything about the case. Okay, so but then the next thing that you say is, have you ever been employed by the original creditor? And they'll say, no, I haven't. And you'll say, did the original creditor ever train you on how they keep their records? And they'll say, no. Then again, the judge will be thinking, oh, you know, this guy doesn't even know like how uh, American Express like keeps their accounting. Maybe they messed up the numbers somewhere. Hmm, isn't that interesting? And then next question, you'll say, prior to your testimony, did you reach out to the original creditor to confirm the amount owed? Witness will say, nope. The judge will be like, oh, seems like these guys aren't doing their due diligence in confirming this person owes the debt. You could, you could probably just cut it off right there. But if the bill of sale isn't included in the documents, oftentimes we see that it is, but if it isn't, you can go ahead and go a little bit further. You could say, have you ever seen or read the bill of sale for the debt? Or the bill of sale is a document that gives them the right and ownership of the debt and the right to collect on it. Uh, to that question, they'll say, uh, yes, I have seen it. And they'll ask, has the bill of sale been disclosed in this case? And they say, nope. And, and uh, you know, you're just like planting seeds of doubt in the judge's mind. And be like, oh, well, that's weird. Why isn't the bill of sale presented? Maybe it's because they don't have the bill of sale. Maybe it's because they don't actually have the right to collect on this debt. That's what you're trying to prove in this case is that people suing you don't have the right to sue you for the debt or to collect on it. So those are just some questions you can run through when cross-examining the plaintiff's witness. Uh, the 10th tip, I actually got a bunch of tips, just a bunch of quick tips laid out in here that'll just help you out. I'm just gonna run through them rapid fire here. All right, uh, trial is freaking long. Just plan on being at the court for like most of the day, like four hours plus. Uh, trial and hearing are actually oftentimes the same things, right? So people will hear that they have a hearing scheduled and they're like, oh, hearing doesn't sound that important. Actually, oftentimes the hearing is the trial. Okay, so if you're showing up at a hearing, like be prepared, you might want to call the court first. Be prepared to basically make this whole case in like an hour to the judge and then have it all resolved and wrapped up. That said, sometimes there are hearings that are just like preliminary events or like early events before the actual trial. All right, next. Know where your court is so you're not late. Have all your evidence ready. Make sure you, you know, if you have trial notebooks, they get in there, bring it with you. Dress to impress. All right, this, uh, this video is about going to court. That's why I'm dressed like this, all right? You know, usually I'm just hanging out in my, my uh, Hawaiian shirts, my flannels, but today I dressed up fancy just to give you guys an idea of how you should look when you go to court. All right, if you dress like a scrub, you'll be treated like a scrub, and scrubs lose lawsuits, all right? You don't wanna lose a lawsuit, so dress fancy, dress nice, shirt, tie, fancy dress, whatever. Look good, you'll get a better verdict for sure. Uh, generally, when you go to court, you need to either be represented by uh, yourself or by your lawyer, okay? You can't have like your mom show up and represent you. That probably won't work out. Arrive early. You don't want to miss, you don't want to miss your hearing. Arrive early. Be prepared for airport-like security, okay? Usually at the courthouse, there's usually a couple security guards, a uh, metal detector. You're gonna have to take out all your stuff, walk through the metal detector, and then get your stuff back and then go into the courthouse, all right? So don't bring anything crazy. Don't bring like your pocket knife. Don't bring your handgun. Don't bring anything like that to the court. You gotta leave it at home. Uh, once you're in like the courtroom, there's probably gonna be a lot of people in there, a lot of stuff going on. Eventually, you're probably just gonna wait for like hours. Eventually your case will be called. Uh, when it is called, just stand up, identify yourself, ask the judges or the security guard where you should stand, where you should be. Ask them, you know, if you have questions, just ask them. They'll probably help you out. Uh, when speaking to the judge, refer to them as your honor. It's not your excellency, it's not your majesty, it's not your highness, just call him your honor. Uh, do not interrupt other people, especially not the judge. Never interrupt the judge. Okay, if you listen to like Supreme Court uh, hearings, you'll hear like the attorneys, if they like even like open their mouth while the judge is speaking, they'll like apologize profusely, like, oh, I apologize, your honor, I didn't mean to interrupt you. All right, finally, tip number 11, what everyone's been waiting for, is have fun. All right, no, what, what, that does not sound like crazy, what, have fun, I'm getting sued. For a debt, how am I supposed to have fun? Well, you know what, you only live once. All right, this could be a fun story after you win. You're gonna go tell your friends, you know, have a few drinks. 
tell you friends, you know, this was, it was kind of a good story. You know, kind of crazy, but kind of a good story. I actually won and got off the hook. And now I don't have to pay anybody anything. There you go. All right, that's pretty fun. All right, so number 11, have fun. Uh, again, this is brought to you by SoloSuit. Uh, if you're being sued for debt, you can just go over to solosuit.com. We can help you respond to the lawsuit. And we can give you other additional resources to help you win. That's all I got for you.